Hello and uh, thank you so much for joining us. We want to talk about taking care of the people of God, making sure that they are preserved, that they are fended for, that their families are also taken care of. Now remember, whatever you invest in, it shows that you value it. If you don't invest in music, you don't value music. If you don't invest in farming, you don't value farming. If you don't invest in buying and selling, you don't value buying and selling. Before we go further, I will start off by praying. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your word because it is true. We thank you for the salvation which comes from Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for your love. May you continue with us. May you guide us, Lord God. Preserve us, Lord God. Help us to understand what we must do with the people of God you have put among us. Help us to understand why it is that we should be taking care of them. Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I will read quickly from uh, 1 Corinthians 9. I'll just read it down very quickly. On this one it says, Paul's right is an apostle. That's just the headline. He says on verse 1, Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not the result of my work in the Lord? Even though I may not be an apostle to others, surely I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my defense to those who sit in judgment on me. Do we have the right to food and drink? Do we have the right to take a believing wife along with us as do the other apostles in the Lord's brothers and sisters? Or is it only I and Barnabas who must work for a living? Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat of its grapes? Who tends flock and does not drink of its milk? Do I say this mainly from a, point, a human point of view? Doesn't the law say the same thing? For it is written in the law of Moses, Do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. Is it about the oxen that God is concerned? Now, the scripture goes on and on and on. But I want you to understand that when a person of God is working in your life, when you are getting sick and the person of God is rushing to praying for you, when you are having spiritual attacks at night and the child of God comes forward and prays for you, the man of God prays for you, whatever you are going through, if God is stretching his hand, reaching out and working in your life through the man of God, you are obliged to think about the man of God's welfare. It is not Jesus he is praying for who is sick. It is not Jesus' marriage. He is coming to make sure he prays for and cast away demons from this person's rural areas. No. He is dealing with issues in your life. I want you to understand this quite uh, frankly because there are many people who complain when we tell them to take care of the people of God who are put in their lives. People tell us, we don't have money. We don't have this. He always wants things from us. But Paul says, am I not an apostle? Did I not plant this church? Did I not come to your homes when you did not know Jesus and preach? Have I not prayed for some of you who did not have jobs and now you have jobs? It feels like entitlement, but it is working. If you could pray for yourself to have a job, why did you not do it? Why did you ask for the man of God to come and pray for you so that you are delivered? Why is it that it took someone else to come and fast and not eat? Why did you were eating, by the way? He did not say fast with me. He said, I will pray for you. He fasted three days, even seven days, for your husband to come back. Now your husband is back. You don't want to see him at your house. You say he's here for Sata. You say he's here for, to eat my biscuits. Let me tell you the truth. There are some who are like children. When you take an orange and you peel it and you give it to a child and you say, can I have one piece, one slice? The child cries and runs away. They don't want to share. Sometimes sharing is hard, but it has to be done because we trust God. Sometimes sharing is hard, but it has to be done because we love the Lord. I want you to understand today that if you truly want the work to continue, you will part ways with some money. If you planted a tomato uh, garden outside 
and you don't water it, but you want to eat of those tomatoes. And you don't put manure in it, but you want to eat of those tomatoes. And you, you, you don't uh, deal with the aphids and the pests, but you want to eat of those tomatoes. You have a serious problem of not understanding investment. The Word of God says, wherever your money is, there your heart will be also. Make sure your money is going where your heart is. If your heart is in the things of God, put your money in the things of God. If your heart is not in the things of God, then do not. But God always gives according to the measure that you use. So, in one way or the other, if you don't appreciate the man of God who is in your life, you will realize that even your children at your home also don't appreciate you as a father and as a mother. Because you are planting lack of appreciation in the atmosphere. You are planting it by the way that you say. Give according to how the Lord is giving you. There is no problem there. But refusing to share with the person who is working. The Bible tells us that the Levites were told not to plant. They were told they will only eat of what God gives them. They will only eat of the things that people come to sacrifice at the temple. So I ask you today, are you allowing the man of God to eat of what you are leaving behind or you are taking it all? Invite the man of God to a child's birthday and say, it is my child's birthday on such and such a day. Don't invite the man of God to pray for your child after the birthday, after he has eaten too much and is now sick in bed. And say, ah, earlier on there was a birthday, people were eating a lot of cake, so now he is sick, please pray for him. Invite the man of God before the birthday starts so that he can also eat. Paul says, do not muzzle the ox. Do not put a, a, a something on the mouth of the ox, a mask on the mouth of the ox, so that it does not eat while it is plowing your field. So that its job is only to plow. There are some people who want 100% profit, but they do not put anything in. You, you, I've seen relationships failing because someone is giving 90% and the other one is just giving 10 and sometimes nothing. And then the relationship fails. And people go and say, I don't know, maybe, maybe it is just me, maybe. No. Giving is the character of God. And it is surprising that those people who give too much and support the men of God too much always have more. They never come to a point of saying, this house is nothing at all. They always have something to eat. Why? Because God watches over their pantry. God watches over their foodstuffs. God makes sure they are taken care of. Let me tell you today, if you want someone to work and you don't want to pay them, you are very rough. If you want someone to walk long distances, to go and see your relatives, to go with you in rural areas where you know your mother is and you know whatever leg problem that she has, it is because of witchcraft. And you want him to put his life in danger, praying for your mother to recover. And when she recovers, you struggle to give. You find it a problem to not give. But you want the person to work. That is very rough. You know, people who do that, at work, if their money doesn't come on time, not if it doesn't come at all, but on time, they make a lot of noise. They take it up to HR, they write letters, they go on social media, they make all sorts of noises because they want their money. They say, I work for this money, I deserve this money. But let me tell you the truth. Children of God, you must respect the work that's being done by the men of God and women of God in your life. Yes, you want them to be called to concerned about your welfare, but in the same way, be concerned about their welfare also. I'm not saying bribe the pastor with money. I'm saying support the pastor where you can. As the Lord helps you, when you look at the pastor's children and you see them wearing slippers or flip-flops, but you have extra shoes, you must just ask, what size does he wear? What size do they wear? And come and support. When you support the children of God, you have planted, because the Lord just says, even if you give so much as a cup of water to any of my child, your children have given unto me. So you can't go to heaven to give something to Jesus, but you can give to the children of God because you love the Lord and because you were taught to, to give. Let me teach you something that will shock you. Whenever you give genuinely and with a true heart, and you know you are giving this because you love God, whenever you do that, you have opened doors somewhere. It may not be money that is coming to you. It may be marriage that was in trouble. But because you have given, God comes in. The Shunammite woman realized that she could not give birth. She could not have children. She had money. So when they were building their house, she said, create a room for the man of God so that he may come and stay here whenever he visits. She didn't say, create a room for the man of God so that in the end I can get a child. No. 
create room for the child of God so for the man of God so that he can have someone to put his head when he visits. I want to encourage you as well. Create room for your heart to give. So that the man of God, once he has been given, the only thing he can give you back is your miracle. The only thing he can give you is a prayer that will break chains in your life. Today I want to pray for a person whom the devil was using to hold them back so that if they don't give, they will not be delivered. If they don't give, they will have nothing. So I want to pray. Father, I know that stinginess was being used in some of your children's hearts. Because the devil knew if they don't give, they will remain in the clutches of the darkness. I pray, Lord God, even in my heart, even in everyone's heart, especially the person listening to this message. I pray, Father, may that be broken. Whatever the devil was used to holding them back, let it be broken. Let them support the work of God. Let them support the children of God. Let them give to you, but to your representative who are here, Lord God. Let them love. Let them give out of genuineness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Continue to subscribe and invite others. Thank you.